Can we the select board? It is called to order. Uh, minutes from November 14th. Any comments? No comments. I move we approve the minutes from November 14th. I second. Any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vendor and payroll warrants in your packets. Any commentary? No comments. No comments. Moving along, do we have any public comment from anyone on anything not on the agenda? I always have something to say. <laughs> hey, I like it when people come. Mm-hmm. But none today. Interesting. Public comment? No. No, no I, do have, I do have a gift for you, though. Oh, oh, wow, is that under $50? It's a little stress reliever. Oh, thanks. It'll be useful. So if I'm noble? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, scheduled appointments. We have none. Mm -hmm. We have COVID-19 rapid test available. Town offices, the library, and police station. Old business. Municipal aggregation programs rates effective for January 24th. 24 meter read, Brian. Yeah, so the, the municipal aggregation program, the first round, the first contract that the program had with um, the suppliers coming to an end at the end of, well, at the beginning of January, and then the new two year contract. Um, 24 month contract is going to be starting with the January uh, January meter reads. Um, Colonial Power is the uh, the energy broker for the aggregation program, and they'll be mailing out postcards um, to I believe it's all residents in town again about the program. And just a reminder that it is an opt out program, so. Um, Customers that reside in Waitley would automatically be enrolled in the program unless they opt out. Um, and I'm going to share with you what the new rates are, um, just so that everybody has a sense of what they are. Um, that's a lot. I forgot how to do it. <laughs> Um, actually, let's look at the new versus seal rates. Um, so at the top of the chart here is our current product offerings. That is currently um, the current prices in the program. And then these are the new product offerings that will be effective in January 2024. Um, as you can see, the market changed over that time period. Um, and uh, so the standard rate is uh, 14 and a half cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and then there's two other options, what we call optional green programs. Um, one is 100% renewable, and it's slightly, slightly, slightly cheaper than the standard, which is 5% mass class one recs above the minimum state requirements. And then we have the option of Green New England, which is um, a little bit well, it is more expensive than the standard and the national. That's 100% renewable, um, which includes additional 38% mass class one recs. Um, these prices, I believe all of these prices are still cheaper than the Eversource basic rate um, for the next, I believe it's a six month, it's still the six month period versus the seven month where they I know they're trying to change their schedule. In terms um, of when they go out, it'll be a seven months this time. Seven months, right? Um, and this is a comparison of those same rates with the EverSource, um, the EverSource Basic Service. So the EverSource Basic Service for the next um, seven months is um, almost say, fifteen point. Yep, yeah, fifteen point eight cents a kilowatt hour. And the most expensive um, option under the uh, the Waitley program is still cheaper than 
the Ember Source Basin, um, with the standard being, um, I believe it's been about 9% uh, lower. I think that's what it says in this letter. It's, so it's lower than even the Ember Source Basic. And I think Colonial calculated around a, a $30 a month savings using the standard rate of the program, assuming around, I think they use the, the usage of 600 kilowatt hours as the basic, um, I think it might have been in the letter, but, you yeah. know, um, so, um, which one of the, you've got to get the word out that. $30 a month savings, yeah. if not, sorry to correct you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, there will be something in the scoop about this that'll have more um, more details and more context. Um, but this is it's been a good program for us these past three years. It was especially good because, and they told us this at the time, we negotiated the rate during COVID when uh, the bottom was falling out of the energy prices. So that's why we had such a freaking good uh, less than 10 cents a kilowatt hour up until now for yeah. our standard offering. So that was um, unusually low um, and the market has just changed. I remember at that time when they called us up and said, hey, let's do it now. <laughs> and we said, all right, we're not doing anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the rate is... Yes. That we've had is fantastic. Yeah, the rate we've had is just unusually fantastic. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And, um, and there were points when, when, when I think, um, uh, I almost said Comcast, when Eversource's rates were like double that. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, I think this program has been really Yeah, great. but that the people should just be aware that there is a yeah. substantial rise in that yeah. the, mm -hmm. the electric bills will go up. Yeah, so but we had a good no fault of ours. It just right. we got a good run these last three years, so didn't right. we? And they still won't be as high as ever. So they still, still won't be, be as high as that's the good thing, right? The other alternative. <coughs> and, uh, okay, and on this. Um, so both of these documents, the public notice, and also this other letter here, will be posted on the town website, and folks should look out for that postcard from Colonial Power as well. Um, and not throw it out because it'll have instructions as to yeah. how to proceed. So, um, okay. and there'll be contact information on the website as well if people have questions. Um, oh, can I? I'm sorry. Can I clarify um, for folks who might be watching that the, it looks like you can opt in to the 100% renewable that we are just getting the standard. But if somebody oh, wants to opt right. in for um, a higher price, which is still less than Eversource, they can opt in to be 100% renewable uh, by going to colonialpowergroup.com slash Waitley. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Next item to discuss how to approach post community agreements favorite subject and community impact fees for marijuana establishments under the newly adapted cannabis control commission regulations yeah so i think this is a this is certainly a timely discussion because i've been contacted by at least two different um marijuana establishment license holders slash provisional license holder um and they're wondering what the town wants to do in terms of the post community agreement. Um, and <clears throat> really community impact fees is what they're what they're what they're wondering about. Yeah. Um, in light of the newly adopted regulations by the CCC. And I'll just uh, I'll I'll just talk for a second about sort of what's changed with the regulations as, as a reminder. Um, so when the when the the law was originally adopted and the regulations were <clears throat> put in place by the CCC, it it was unclear what the CCC's role was in terms of post community agreements and what authority they had um, to review them and modify them or reject them. And that was the, the CCC requested that the legislature resolve the ambiguity in the 
in the, in the state law, which they did, and made it clear that the CCC could regulate post community agreements. Um, so the CCC has done that, and it laid out a process um, as to how that would be done. They're going to they're going to require that an establishment, a cannabis establishment or a marijuana establishment, have a host community agreement that complies with the CCC regulations um, when they initially apply for a license. In at each renewal period, um, that's when they're going to start reviewing host community agreements. So, in terms of the community impact fee, this was before the under the old regulations. I'll say it was unclear what that what was really meant by a community impact fee, and there was really no other language about other types of payments that could. That municipalities could contract to receive from from uh, a business. So we had we meaning uh, all the municipalities in Massachusetts had all different sorts of fees that they would ask for the you know from the cannabis establishments. Um, you know they would have they would ask for community impact fees. Uh, we'd ask for donations. We'd ask for all sorts of different payments, and uh, the industry took exception to that. Um, and they really pushed hard on the legislature to um, rein in those types of fees and payments. Going Some going so far as to say it was blackmail or pay to play or all that kind of stuff. Um, and so in the newly adopted regulations by the CCC, they laid out a process in which municipalities are to submit invoices to the establishment, which it also sent to the CCC for the CCC to review and approve these impact fee payments that municipalities are requesting. So not only are they reviewing HCAs, they're reviewing and certifying community impact fee requests from the municipality. Um, and there's an appeal process in, in those types of things. And then the community impact fee payment will become payable upon certification by the CCC, subject to the uh, establishment, you know, appealing to a court or, or filing an action in court for breach of contract is what the regulations say. So where does that leave us or, or leave municipalities? Um, it's, it's pretty clear in the regulations that there's really no other payments that can be talked about or discussed in the HCA. Um, this still has the, um, you know, the community impact fee can't be more than 3% of the, whatever it was, the gross annual sales or something like that. Um, but it really requires the, the municipalities to, to keep detailed records of the costs and the reasons they're for, and they have to be related, you know, costs incurred related to the facility, to that specific um, you know, marijuana establishment, and then, you know, itemize those, put them on your voice, send them to the uh, establishment in the CCC in hopes that they approve them. And it's never been clear what's a, we'll call it a recoverable um, cost for a municipality. Um, and we still don't know. As one of, one of our comments. They, they didn't make it clear. No, one of our comments <laughs> to the CCC was, and also to our legislators, that it's not clear to us what costs we can try to recover, or or what or what costs we could recover for for the municipality trying to address the impacts of the facility and how far that carries. Could we pay for somebody to to do a um, I don't know to hire an extra health teacher for to talk about substance abuse, it, it's not clear what you know what we could recover. Those, what, what what we can recover. Um, I think it will become clear as some as municipalities try to recover those costs. Um, we should be able to find out which ones they say yes to, which ones they say no to, and if they're applicable here, it's something that the town could try you know to try to go back and recover those costs mm -hmm. by assessing the community impact fee. So I don't think that the town should give up that right to 
you know, assess that fee because in the future it, it may be something that is more certain and it is something that the town may want to go after. So I, so there's a waiver process in here also where the town can say we don't need an HCA, we're not going to collect maybe the impact fees. Um, I don't think I don't think that's in the town's best interest to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's good to. to I think it's good to have people come in and talk to us. Yeah. If, if, if that all ever happens, if, if that's the only thing that ever happens, is that we get to talk to these folks once every three years, then, mm -hmm. then that's, I think that's valuable in and of itself. Yeah. So I, I think what's happened with the regulations, uh, there's a, there was a, a, a balance of power, whatever we want to call it, between the establishments, the state, and the municipalities. And with those regulations, it shifted. Um, and the states reserved a lot more, the state meaning the CCC, has reserved a lot more power for itself in, you know, in dealing with these situations. Now, so I think that the, the, munis the response of the municipality in terms of where it could claw back control, so to speak, um, is the length of the agreement. Uh, it is the length of the HCA. Because um, mm -hmm. the establishments need, and, and I just put in thirty six months. Because it used to be five years. It used to be five years. Be five years. years. Um, they needed the establishments needed an agreement every year for a renewal. Um, so if you have a five year agreement. Things go bad um, in the first year. Then there's another four years where where we're just riding along and really not able to do anything. Um, if it's a year. Year goes by, it doesn't doesn't go well. The the, the town will say no thanks. We're not going to renew the HCA, and it and how would that impact their license? So their license depends on them maintaining yeah an HCA. Yep. Yeah. Um. So if so, they would. <clears throat> there's language in the regulations that allow the, and I'm not sure that this is legal, and it would end up in court, and it probably will end up in court at some point. Hopefully not with Waitley, but with another town, where the CCC says, well, we can provide other equitable relief as we feel necessary. So does that mean that they could say who will relief to who? To the to the marijuana establishment, who can no longer operate within the municipality. Can they say, You don't need an HCA anymore? Sorry, Waitley, we're just gonna let them operate regardless. That's an extreme. I'm not mm -hmm. sure that that would I, I don't think that that would fly in a court, but that's Court cases are expensive. Mm -hmm. They could say you could have. They might say you could um, operate for another six months in the town, and then. I mean, I don't think they have that authority to do it, but I don't know what other equitable relief means in that sense mm -hmm. because it hasn't been defined. Um, but in my opinion, the municipality, if it doesn't want to continue the relationship with the with the marijuana establishment under these regulations, it does not need to. Um, and that's really why we included that last provision in in the in the HCA, which says there's no expectation that this should be renewed. Mm -hmm. uh, the towns have no obligation to renew it because there's there are some instances where, and we've seen it with castaways in the adult entertainment license, where there's kind of a property interest created in the licenses that we that we grant to the point where if someone's just doing their job and there's no issues. You know, we were cautioned from town council that you can't just randomly, right. you know, not renew a license if you didn't have a reason. But if, I, I think if it's stated in the document that says this is for the term of what it is and there's no obligation to renew, then I don't I don't think that obligation is created. At least the argument exists for that obligation is not created right. for future use. That sounds like a kind of clause that would be tested in court. Yeah. Yeah. But presumably if someone is operating in the law, not causing it, it. I mean, it's more of a clause that's there for we, we really would have that reason. It seems to I mean, it just as a reasonable person, right? We right. really would have to have some reason to not renew um, an HCA and to, to stay out of that particular legal potential jeopardy. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's, I think that's just how we've treated businesses in this town. If they're right. not making any trouble, we just get out of the way, right? Yeah. yeah. But, so what's different, and I'll compare it to uh, 
an on-premise liquor license where you know where where the where the select board has a local licensing authority has much more authority over the operation of the establishment than it does a, a marijuana establishment. So for, uh, almost this is this is really the only vehicle where you can exercise any sort of control yeah. over how the establishment's yeah. operating. And um, it, it I, I don't like it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it 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 favors towards a shorter period for the HCA because it's the only way to address the problem. Mm -hmm. um, whereas whereas uh, uh, someone who's selling alcohol, they're you know, you have the right to call a hearing and to impose suspensions or discipline. They spend their license and um, close them down for a week or whatever. But that regulatory framework doesn't exist. Um, the other part that makes me nervous is we know that state agencies don't get out here very often. So if they have limited resources, limited inspectors, things like that, my sense is that they're not going to be out here very often. Um, so that also that was, gives me pause. That was politely stated. Yeah, that was nice, right? Yeah. Um, but they don't get out here very often. That's the reality of it. So it, it makes me pause a little bit to try to think about what else we could include in here. You know, what if, and I keep going back to the alcohol licenses, if there was somebody who was caught selling to an underage person, they could come before the select board, have a discussion, a public hearing, and then they could take action. I don't know what happens if, if someone's caught selling to somebody underage, what would happen at the CCC? Um, that's assuming they even have like secret shop or whatever they're called, mystery shop or something where couldn't our police be in it? They do that for alcohol. Uh, uh, and, and then so or it might do. be a good idea. We could test that. We could put that in our it, it might be a good idea. And then but so they do that and then there's no we can't call a public hearing. We mean the, the select board of the town can't call a public hearing and say, come on, you know, you guys got a community, you gotta shut down for three days. That authority doesn't exist, so it's mm. it, it's really. Would that authority have to be granted by the state? We can't write it into the HCA for ourselves. I, I think we give ourselves the authority. I think yeah. if the town were to develop a bylaw, mm -hmm. general bylaw, mm -hmm. to that effect, possibly. Okay. I, I, again, it's probably subject to challenge. And we'd have um, to go to town council mm -hmm. to figure out how no, to do that. That would be a major operation to get to do a bylaw. Yeah. <clears throat> um, generally speaking, I think, um, I mean, there's been some issues with the existing establishments, minor issues. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I think they've been trying to op operate correctly. Mm -hmm. um, we had, we've had over complaints from, you know, from a couple, couple times when we, from the outdoor cultivation. Which I guess shouldn't be unexpected, um, and there were some issues with the major event and um, oh, crowd yeah. control issues for the mm -hmm. grand opening of the establishment on State Road. But um, all in all, it's been pretty quiet except for a couple of days. But so I so I have uh, there's um, the council for the state for for, for Tor Verde. Um, is looking to talk to the to the town to the select board and try to figure out um, how the town wants to approach um, the HCA and the community impact. And I again, I, I think as these other establishments come up for renewal, they're also going to need to yeah. have uh, new HCAs or amended HCAs. So. Um, I think we should certainly <clears throat> not be looking to collect <coughs> any community impact fee until we see what what well, seems to be covered. Well, that actually was going to get to the, the question I had because I, I think we didn't create a separate account for that to go into a, a town meeting recently, so that there would be a place to put it where it would be clear that that's um, community impact fees. Because this says the applicant agrees to pay to the town 
all community impact fees levied and certified by the Cannabis Control Commission in accordance with the law, which I understand is 3%. So it says all. Well, it's a maximum 3%, right. but we don't even know yet what fees will be certified by the Cannabis Control Commission. Right. So we need, oh, and certified. And we need certified. to submit a detailed invoice of the costs that the town has incurred. Okay. So that okay, so that's a, so that's my, that's my question then. That do we collect this? Is that is that account that we were going to have to hold that separate is basically not useful anymore because whatever we do has to be certified, and by then we've already spent the money. It would really be a reimbursement, yeah. It, it, would, so, it would be a reimbursement that that we weren't even sure we were going to get. If they weren't so right, oh yeah, no, I understand. So, so that yeah, so that sort of a, a accounting um, idea to keep it clean, to keep it separate, was right. is not really going to be useful because it's going to be was that account strictly for community impact fees, or was that yeah for yeah. the sales tax? No, sales tax is going in general. Okay. Sales tax is going in general. Okay, great. Right. Um, and I can't remember if this is last town meeting or if it was a previous uh, a year ago. Um, but so it so it it really does like you don't get any reimbursement until someone else has judged it and you have to spend it first. You can't like right. submit and say, well, what if I spend it on this? What would you would you approve it? You have to spend it. Right. It's cost and, incurred over the previous twelve month yeah. period. The twelve month period starting yeah. on the on the. The date of the uh, final license is issued for the establishment. And you have to, I assume, make an argument that it's due to right. mm -hmm. this establishment, establishment being right. in the town and you have to prove that. Well, I, I think we're going to have to certainly wait a couple of years until we see some determinations by the Canvas Control mm -hmm. Commission of what they are going to permit and what they are not going to. Yeah. In, in some of the stuff that that happens, you know, the establishments, whether it be cannabis establishment or other establishments, you know, should pay for some of these things anyways, like police details they pay for anyways if they need it. Mm -hmm. Inspections, they right. should be paying for the inspections that they need because we should have inspections. Right. Um, Do we have an inspection fee established for, like, Board of Health can go in there or who who can go in the inspection? That guy. Well, that guy. Oh, <laughs> fire chief. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, but so fire chief, fire. Could, go, could a police chief go in and do an inspection? Um, Presumably, the, the, the police, the fire chief would be looking for fire safety related. Life safety. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, board of health would be looking at board of health related things. Yeah. Um, but uh, who inspects them to see if they're actually obeying the state laws on cannabis? Nobody at the local level right. is qualified for that. And as you said, we don't expect state inspectors to come out this way very often. I'm not. Well, clearly Boston knows best what we ought to be doing out here. Maybe we should have maybe this regional, uh, regional uh, cannabis inspection program. Uh, there we go. There I'll we email for a Get the first on that. Yeah, and then... We'll submit a community impact the receipt uh, in, invoice for that and get it rejected. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So those uh, those are my general thoughts, but more specifically, I, we have a request from Torverde to sit down and have a discussion. Joyce has been I don't know, Joyce the yeah, last we, year, but Joyce has been designated in the past as the person yeah. to. Talk yeah. about these things, but I don't, I don't know how yeah. To yeah, I mean, right. well, if we have if this or some um, amended version of this becomes our sort of standard one, the, the one thing we have done is when we came up with the draft, everybody had the same one. We didn't like somebody said, oh, we shouldn't have them. No, everybody has the same one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was just a matter of fairness. I got a call from, I don't know if I should say the public. Somebody. Someone who would probably be a little bit ashamed if I said it mm -hmm. um, to to lobby for one of the people who one of the entities and um, and I said no 
they can't have a better deal because some really, you know, someone with good name and face recognition in this area called me up and said we should have, but we should get treated differently. And I just said no. And we've, we've been, and, and the rest of the select board back in. Uh, that's just one thing we, you know, we come up with an agreement, it goes for everybody. Um, I've got another question about this whole process. I'm, you know, in putting together these rules, I know the state had social equity requirements, and how does that fit in? Um, so and, be, and obligations for. Yeah, so those will those will be separate. Um, yeah, it's not part of the HCA. It's not those part were, of those were laid out in far more detail in, yeah, the, yeah. in the link that you had sent, yeah. and they were more comprehensive than I thought, yeah. which yeah. I was happy about. So the new regulations will have certain requirements that that we need to follow. Most of them are process requirements, and mm -hmm. um, you know, related to the availability of information um, criteria that we use to approve and review applicants for HCAs, which I don't think the town's ever uh, yeah. rejected an HCA yeah. or, or never rejected an applicant. So um, it's not like, you know, some towns had different scoring systems where you get points and, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're going for limited uh, limited licenses. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, yeah, yeah. There's, so, there's room for malfeasance or misfeasance, whatever we want to say. I'm um, I'm just wondering if it gives another excuse for the CCC to come and to, to put a squeeze on us, either you know, for money or information, and just does it take resources just to generate the data? Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if we could use uh, community impact fee to pay the cost. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we should submit that invoice. Because if we're being required by the state and the state's not paying for it, then it's a, a direct consequence of, of the, these uh, uh, folks being in town that we have to do so we can keep track of the costs. So submit that one. And Should we it may not be a huge amount, but it. Uh, submit multiple 30 cent requests. But multiple. Right, yeah. I think anything about 30 cents should be. Because I'll have to review them. Yeah. So we should definitely keep them separate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is I want to make sure that we have are able to do some level of oversight. Because I remember when we had the castaway hearings two years mm -hmm. ago. One of the problems in that we encountered was the fact that town bylaws had not been enforced for years and years. Mm, yeah. And yeah. then that's right, on us. Yeah. Right. But I want to get it out front. You know, that let's not get into that situation where again where we allow regulations to adherence to slip. Yeah. Which creates a, an expectation that the regulation isn't there. Yeah. Can I pipe in for a second on that? Yeah. Uh, as far as I understand, we don't have a lot of enforceable yeah. regulatory yeah. power. All right, let's we'll um, see that thanks. Hopefully. Uh, uh, we don't have a lot of enforceable regulatory yeah. power, as Brian has outlined it. Well, and as, as, as far as the cannabis study, but just for general establishments, we, you know, like Board of Health, entry like fire department, whatever. Just to make yeah. sure. I'm gonna, I want. I want to go back to when I said if we write up a bylaw, and you said that's that's a big process. Yeah. Walk me through the process because maybe it's in our interest to consider it. I, I, it's still rankling, you know, running around the back of my mind. Like it, it's most to me, it's a, a matter of priorities. The planning board has mm -hmm. to do a lot of work mm -hmm. when we try to have a new bylaw. Okay. Um, and what else is on their plate that wouldn't get done if they took on this particular bylaw? Got it. Um, so it might be a matter of prioritizing mm -hmm. and ha like putting that out there as, hey, we think we might want to look at this, and they might say, twenty twenty five. I just think, yeah. Or, or yeah, yeah that, because because there are other things that they're that they're that looking they're at. Yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking that if we're going into something that's 
kind of an unknown. We might want to protect yeah. ourselves as much as possible, and that might bump it up in priority. Uh, I think in this case, we have particular legal, potential legal entanglements because we might run up against state law on cannabis right. establishments. Right. So we can't be the only places thinking about right. exactly by law. There may be some out there already because other towns have like a staff of ten Bryans <laughs> to uh, to take. Nobody's well, a, 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 a staff of ten. But no <laughs> Yeah. I well, mean, I, that would be interesting to look into. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah. Ever since Brian said it, it's been. I, I think for now, I think I'd just put it on the back burner and let's see. Yeah. They, they, this is going to have to shake yeah. out. There's a lot yeah, of moving parts of this that. Yeah, yeah. And, but independently of this, I think you're right. We should yeah. be at least considering that, We're and maybe ourselves. that they'll, maybe yeah. there'll be lots of good reasons not to. But mm -hmm. we should at least think about it. And, Yep. Maybe that's something to ask planning board folks if they're yeah up for it. And it might maybe they, they, they plenty on their plate things. already. I wish there had been like a I really miss the Franklin County Selectments Association dinners. Is there you could just Was ask there such everybody. a thing? There used to be quarterly dinners before COVID. Can we read it's on the your house? Yeah. <laughs> well, how's it for the book? <laughs> Where were they held? Oh, often it was at, um, sometimes at the Polish Club. Um, sometimes uh, it was at Turner, uh, Turner Smalls High School. Mm -hmm. uh, or not, no, Franklin Tech, we had there once. Uh, uh, there's a restaurant in Greenfield we had at once. Mm -hmm. there, uh, I think we did the Lee in once. I can't remember all the places. Okay. I'm, um, I'm willing to take a look into what other towns have. You yeah, considered yeah. looking at bylaws or how they're considering handling. Right, because we have one yes. for adult entertainment. Right, mm -hmm. might as well see if there's we can have a bylaw. Yeah. Regarding. I mean, yeah. board members, is it okay if I have to talk to the special time to make my Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that is uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I guess my last question on this is. This it looks like a really solid draft. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Uh, I as I read through it, I had questions about it, but it's mostly about what the, the language around community impact piece. Now I think I understand it better. Um, uh, we don't expect this language to change. We think of things like you. You. you it's, I feel like you've included everything in here that you think ought to be in here. I, I can be in there. You got one other thing? Uh, um, I think the town should get notice of any enforcement actions by the CCC against the establishment. Oh, we wouldn't otherwise get. And where would we? Oh, okay. And who would be responsible for giving it? Put that under the, the establishment. The, the, the establishment because it's an agreement with the establishment yeah. responsibilities yeah. of the so responsibility of the applicant. Yeah. Okay. I I agree with that. Yep. But, um, I want to of course want to put in. We get to inspect them again. We want them. I guess that's not um, realistic. What was the other thing? The uh, the the one thing you put in thirty six months as a reasonable time period. Um, I'm not sure. That, uh, I'm not that, sure that I agree. With that that, that was more, a, but that was a placeholder, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that uh, the time <laughs> period is the one thing that we could have some exercise of control over. Yeah. And if it's shorter, that means when new regulations come out, we keep these up to date. Yeah. Yeah. And I think back to how, how the board relicensed castaways. Oh, you're new. We don't know how you're going to operate. So you have a short period of time. But if you've proven yourself and you run a good operation, maybe it can be a little bit longer because you have a proven track record. But mm -hmm. in this case, most of these places don't have a proven track record. Right. Uh, which I think. Leads, you know, which is closer to a shorter, yeah, a shorter time period. So, like, I, I, I would agree. Look, in here, we've got uh, number 10 uh, adherence to applicable laws, bylaws, and local board of health, health regulations. Could we break out board of health and make it a separate line like police and fire for a board of health inspection? 
rather than just lumping it in uh, into. Well, the, I guess to the the, 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 it is a consumable product which could oh. theoretically be attracting vermin, insects, whatever. Oh, so to put it as a two to consult to, with, with right, right the board of health. Right. To ensure the establishment of Yeah. Right. That seems local. Yeah, I, I think or make, making the board of health a separate entity rather than lumping it in. Yeah. I would not object to that. that I would not either. And that would give us greater uh, authority if there was a potential problem to have some board of health built in. Yeah, in the board of health is I mean, the Board of Health has different powers in the sense of they can adopt regulations that promote, you know, the public health, safety, and welfare of the community, which is a, a really broad mm -hmm. grant of power um, to the Board of Health. So, and, and they're, they're able to adopt their own regulations to uh, effectuate those purposes. So, um, it's it's a more flexible vehicle to regulate establishments like this. Yeah. As I think, giving them yeah, their, their own yeah, line item. They get their own line. And then um, one more under there, you are suggesting this. Um, they're responsible to notify us. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of enforcement actions. Of enforcement actions. Um, yeah. And we can't, like, put under responsibility of the town to shut you down if you have enforcement items. I'm trying to think, how would you put that? How can we sneak that in there? But you're yeah. just saying, okay, so we don't have that power. Okay. Because the statute is not written the way it is for alcohol licenses. Right. And, and, and I'd say, well, you know, at, at any point in time, we could, we could put language in there that says we could terminate the agreement, but there's nothing that would compel the Cannabis Control Commission to take action or, or, or remote mm -hmm. or suspend their license. Um, I mean, if they agreed with us, then they could, right? Right. But if they didn't, then really the only real power that the municipality has is to not renew a host community agreement mm -hmm. and say, sorry, you've been a bad actor in town here and we're done. Um. Okay. 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 Onward. So it's is someone willing to have a conversation with Tor Burnay and myself? these things. Sure. I can do that. But I'll have a Okay. Uh, new business to discuss and vote whether to implement limiting winter parking regulations effective immediately until April 15, 2024. Draft. Language for winter parking restrictions. No parking shall be allowed on streets or in municipal parking areas between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m. effective immediately until April 15, 2024. This parking restriction shall not apply to residents of the Smikes House and their guests who park in the spaces designated for the Smikes House. I move that we uh, go forward with our usual winter parking restriction for this coming winter. I second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, to consider the appointment of Sean Kirkenwell to the Waitley Fire Department as prepared. Conveniently, now I would call. See it out. When everybody watches a recording, they can read it. Oh, okay. Good. There. But didn't we, didn't we appoint this guy last time? He was here. Um, we needed to do an open session. Oh, we need to right. open. Right. That was, okay. Right. Uh, so wait till we get back. Um, oh, so we don't need to. Uh, I'll let you have quite well. It, if we have questions. Question. Yes, questions. No so, questions. No questions. Any questions? Um, I don't have any questions. I, I liked your question. You liked my question last time. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't Do I, have a motion? I don't remember yeah. it. Um, but I move that we appoint uh, 
Senator Gandalf to the Wheatley Fire Department. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Select board liaison updates. Uh, all I have is uh, M's Board of Oversight. We will be interviewing two candidates for the chief position a week from Thursday, December 7th. Cool. Uh, the screening committee came up with two people that they strongly recommend, and the Board of Oversight will be interviewing them, voting, and then on their recommendation, it will go to the Deerfield Select Board, which is technically the hiring authority, uh, yeah. to and presumably the Deerfield Select Board will follow the recommendation of the Board of Oversight and appoint or offer the job to that person. Okay, I thought it was very nice of them to email out and ask if we had specific questions. Yeah. That we'd want to, and, yeah. and I thought about it, I thought about it. I think they're in a much better position to come up with yeah. really good questions. So I did. Can you be as good as that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that the screening committee was in the best. Was comprised of people who know the field. Yeah, and sure. yeah, come up with the best questions. But it was very nice. Yeah, I yeah. just want to appreciate appreciate yeah. being asked, even though I didn't have any data. Mm -hmm. uh, any other updates? Um, no, it looks like under town administrator updates, there's something on the pump tree lane. That, but I think I talked about that yeah. last time. Um, yeah. And that's the only update. That's the only. Uh, Group I've done anything with recently. Julie? I have no updates. Thank you. And administrator update, Brian. 43 minutes. <clears throat> All right. Speak, you make it. Slowly. speak slowly. Um, or speak fast. What you have? Center School RFP site visit. So we got the site visit. The, it was a non mandatory site visit for folks that wanted to tour the school. There were um, three people besides me. Um, two of them were with the same group of, of people. Um, so um, we at least think that there is some interest mm -hmm. um, in the school. Uh, proposals proposals are due uh, December 13th. Um, and we will go from there. Um, and um, Julie was able to get in touch with Brian, Brian Elwick, Elwick. Yep. Elwick um, <clears throat> who is a structural engineer. And uh, we met at the site just before Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, he gave us back a proposal um, and suggested that any work be done at an hourly rate. Um, if it comes to the point where you know, we need those Where services, I think. Yeah. That's sort of how we thought about it. Yeah. Um, so at this point, in, in terms of the how we deal with the milk bottle, um, it seems like it would be wise to, to see what comes back from proposals and what um, the winning proposer has in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we can go from there. Um, okay. And I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's worth doing anything, to, you know, before that. Like um, even the surveying and getting it, you know, sliced up but the town land. Um, we could, I, I guess. Um, well, we would need to, so we would need the money appropriated at the special okay. meeting tonight. Okay. Um, and then we could. So if that were appropriated, that. that would still be worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. right. I just want to make sure I, I understood what it, you were saying. It might be worth getting on somebody's calendar. Yeah, because I'm not sure how quick they're going to be able to get out. We'd have to make a decision yeah. on what the best procedure would be, whether to try to change the property line or do it as an easement. Right. Both of which are in the options. Historical Society or the, right. the winning proposer may have different thoughts about mm -hmm. what they're willing to 
Oh, what they're willing to do, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you can talk to the planning board and see what if they have any preference because it did change doing AR would involve going to the planning board. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we're not sure if we're going to move it or not, and we probably won't, but does it make sense to actually do the survey and the slicing up of the land if we end up having a chunk? I, I think that something has to be done regardless. Yeah, so so assuming someone select buys yeah. that property, currently the milk bottle is on the property of the school, and either we have to give the town the right to go on that property or move the property right. line. But either way, the survey has to be done. Right. To really, to... to okay. okay. I was I was thinking okay. the milk that, bottle would be moved before finalizing the sale, but that's probably I, I optimistic. Think, I think a sur survey would have to be done. Hopefully, a potential buyer would pay for a survey so they would know exactly what they're buying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, normally in a real estate transaction, the yeah. purchaser does yeah. the survey. Right. So I think this may all just depend on what comes back from the RFP. And so you're saying we should not make the appropriation at tonight's? I think we make the appropriation, we so may we, not end up spending it. Oh, ah, I see. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Because, because, we, might need it. because we, we might need it. Because we might need it. Okay. Got it. It's like Monday the River Road. Like, <laughs> Okay. Um, so, um, December 13th is when the proposals are due. Uh, South County Senior Center site visit um, at 23 Palm Tree Lane in Sunderland. Um, we talked about this the we last talk, We talked about this the last yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the process that it would take, that, let's hypothetically say Sunderland's interested in, in purchasing a building, uh, in terms of the timeline, it would likely require, obviously, town meeting approval of the you know the purchase price, um, and it would require a uh, uh, a ballot vote at a local election to do a debt exclusion, um, which would act you know however quickly they can act, maybe a couple months after that as well, assuming all of those pass. Um, the other the other part of the jump over is. Obviously, the appraisal and any other bidders that might be interested in the building, municipalities can only pay, municipalities cannot pay over appraisal price for property. Um, so, depending on what that appraisal comes back at, depending on what other interested parties are involved in purchasing the building, if there are any or not, um, and also whether whether the, the, the current owner is interested in, you know, not selling for how many ever months before the before the town could right. you know get authority and financing to to purchase the property. So there's still a lot of things that need to fall into place you know, for something for this to happen. Um, which thinking about it, it, it made me just think about how difficult it is for municipalities to <laughs> obtain property on the open market. Yeah. Um, and that's the, the suggestion that we should send to the, I don't have an answer, but suggestion that we should send to the, to the governor's office was looking for, you know, ways to improve municipal government. It's, we're, municipalities are really at a disadvantage to purchasing property because you can't act quickly. Yeah. Um, so I might send that note well, along. Um, I'd, I'd sign that. Yeah. 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 Um, special town meeting tonight at seven thirty. Everybody has time to drive down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Come In this room. And, and speaking of driving down, one other note: uh, if you're driving on Christian Lane, please, oh yeah, please, please note that the lane that the south lane of Christian Lane, which had been open, is now closed, and the north lane is now open. So yeah, please be careful. Yeah, because yeah. you'll see the it, Jersey barriers though. So the the, yeah. the the barriers are there, but don't. But it has moved. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're now required and, to yield to traffic in the direction that you were not previously. 
previously. Right. This, this was due to a miscommunication yeah. in the initial report as to which lane was in need of repair. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been driving on the bad side. The bad side ain't so bad. Right. Yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> so so the vehicles coming down the hill now need to yield. Right down the hill towards the bridge. Yeah. Any other any items anticipated? Um can we uh are we gonna settle on December meeting? Set our meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think we have a tax classification hearing on December fifth. Yeah. And is that also going to have a, like the board of selectmen meeting to go with it, or no? That's a, is that That's next week, week right? Now? We're not going to. We we'll yeah. probably won't have a lot of things. I think if things come up, then then we can, we may as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure that we have much to cover. Right. I and I guess the the uh, idea was floated to um, move our regular Tuesday meeting from the 12th to the 19th. Um, yeah. I would miss a done. Done. Congratulations. 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 Is the tax meeting at 7 or at yeah. 6? Over. It's over. It's over? Almost. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. well, we haven't adjourned yet, but we voted on your... Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, I would like to um, to say a few words in uh, oh, for the supporting yeah. the, uh, the 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 vote that you've already had. Um, is now a good time? Yes. All right. Um, you know, Sean, I interviewed him. Uh, he interviewed very well. Uh, I've spoken with uh, several people who are happy to give references um, for him. I think he's going to be a great member of the fire department. He has a lot to offer. He's uh, enrolled in GCC right now in their uh, fire science program, and uh, he's just wrapping up his first class um, right now. And that was in what? Fire protection service? Oh, uh, fire protection, fire protection systems. Protection systems, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's looking forward to taking some more classes in the coming semesters, and um, he may actually be enrolling in an EMT class. So I think he's going to be a, a really good um, asset to the fire department. Well, great. great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Right. Thank you Thank for you guys very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good speech. Good speech. <laughs> Keep it quick. All right. What if they revoted and then went the other way? Yeah. That would be <laughs> oh, I wouldn't accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Back to schedule. Back to schedule. Yeah. So the question is, do we want to meet on the 26th? If not, then maybe we move it to the, the 19th. Why well, don't we just make those. one meeting on the 19th? Right. The 19th would work for me. Yeah. Um, well, I normally I have a, there's a group of people coming in from out of town that I'm supposed to have dinner with that night um, who are giving the physics department at Smith and Award. So it would seem ungrateful if I were to not be there. On the 19th? On the 19th, yeah. We could also keep the 12th, we could just not do the 26th. I'm un unfortunately unavailable on the 12th for the best and only reason. <laughs> right. All right. Mm -hmm. These are well, these the 20th, 20th or 21st. Um, Oh, uh, later in that week? Yeah. The 21st would work. Yes, the 21st would work. Okay. Yeah. So, Jess, how much time do you need for the licenses to um, get them off to the ABC? That's the perfect amount of time. Okay. 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 So, so I'm going to move what would normally be our meeting on the 12th on my calendar. I'm moving that to the 21st. Right. Six o'clock. Yeah. Regular time. Um, and we're not going to meet the 12th or the 26th, correct? Right. <laughs> correct. Unless okay. where something comes up that you miss. Right. And I'm saying you're Joyce in the sabbatical in the spring. I am a sabbatical in the spring. What is the timing of that? Um, well, uh, I'll be around for most of it. There'll be uh, 10, well, a total of 11 weeks out of town, but available by Zoom. 
Okay, but, or but that will, that's uh, that's going to be probably talking. probably mean we'll go back to earlier meetings. Um, so no, I would say so you, you don't have to go to earlier meetings. Um, I just keep you from having to be well, meetings at midnight local true, time. True, that's that's quite true. But um, uh, for most of the time, I won't have to meet who would be bothered by that. Um, and uh, I saw the okay. we'll, we'll 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 see at the time. We can see, we, yeah, we can see. The we time. did it last year. We did it, for, but that was for kind of for the summer, mm-hmm. and I sort of feel like people's schedules are different in the summer, mm-hmm. and my people from members of the public could more likely be able to come for it. But this is during the mm-hmm. like the, the busy season, mm-hmm. and I think earlier might not really work better for getting people in the door. You know? mm-hmm. and, uh, so I'm I'm okay with with not trying to. It was, it was lovely to have it work earlier in the summer, but. It was nice to see it's still light in the summer. <laughs> now it'll just be dark all oh, the time. It's going to be dark all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Have a motion to I adjourn? I move that we adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you in 28 minutes. Yeah, we have a 28 minute break here.